To make things easier, I've linked a toolkit down below. So you'll want to start by downloading that. Once you've downloaded the toolkit, navigate to Golden Egg. And Golden Egg will go up to File, Open ROM, find our ROM. You want to make a copy. That way you'll have an original and then whichever one you're going to work on. And then rename it. We'll just do Test. And then we'll open it. Next, we'll set up the emulator. So go to File, Emulator, Emulator Path, and then select your emulator. Okay, so now we're gonna open a level. We'll go to File, Open Level, and then here you have a list of every room in the game. And we're just gonna do 1-1. One, one. Right now we're at the very top of the screen, so we're gonna scroll down, and here we have the first part of 1-1. One, one. Like most programs, Golden Egg also has a bunch of hotkeys. So you have Control Z, Control Y, Undo and Redo. And basically everything else also has one. Just click on the menus up here and it shows it on the right side. All right, so let's go over the icons up here at the top. So this first one opens the level, or room rather. You've got Save. And now these next two are Object and Sprite Mode. You can only use one at a time. So when Object Mode is on, you can only move objects around, which is ground, platforms, basically anything that's not one of these red squares. Those red squares are sprites. Conversely, when sprite mode is on, you can only move sprites around, but not objects. One thing that you'll notice about sprites is that they all have a three digit code on them. So this one is zero AD. If you wanna find it, go over to the object and sprite selector, click sprite, and then scroll through the list until you find it. Alternatively, you can just search for it by name. So like we want egg block. You can search it that way. There's a brief description of what it is down here at the bottom, and the same thing will pop up if you just hover over it. All right, now let's go over how we can interact with objects. So if you click it, you can drag it around. If you right click, that's gonna duplicate it. Some objects you can scale up or scale down. You can also multi-grab objects by holding control when you click them, or you can just drag select them. Everything you have selected can be manipulated all at the same time. For instance, I could duplicate that, or I could delete all of it. I can also adjust the height or the width of it, although some objects might get a little messed up. One more thing you can do with objects is you can layer them on top of each other. So if I want to put this brown platform on the ground here, I can do that. I can also put it behind the ground by going up to edit and hitting decrease Z order. All right, so let's say you want to close the object and sprite selector. You can click right here, click it again to open it. You can also move it around and you can pin it to the sides. The same thing applies to these other menus as well. And a cool thing that you can do is you can set it to auto hide so you just have to hover over it to open it, and then it closes automatically. If you want to close a room, you click the X up here. And you also have a drop down menu to switch between rooms. Unfortunately, you're not able to reorder rooms. Okay, so let's go over some advanced stuff. We're gonna open the header, and this is where you're gonna set the background, foreground, music, any animations that it might have. One thing to know about the BG1 tile sets is that anything outside of the tile set won't work. For example, if we change the flower garden theme to the cave theme, all of this becomes a mess. An easy way to tell what objects you can use based on your tile set is to go to the object and sprite selector, click current, and that's gonna show you everything that's available in the tile set. There are also some global objects that every tile set can use. So if you go into your toolkit, go to miscellaneous, and then global objects, here's a diagram showing all of them. And sprites also work the same way. If you go into the header and then go down to sprite tile set, you can pick one, but you can only use one at a time, just like with the BG1 tile set. If you want to know what's in any particular sprite set, go back to your miscellaneous folder, double click sprite sets, and that's going to take you to this Google document. On the side here, you have the sprite set number, and then you have all the sprites that are listed. Some are enemies, some are other stuff like arrow signs and ski lifts. Just like the BG1 tile set, any sprites that are outside of your selected tile set won't work. Alright, now let's check out the palette editor. 
This is where you'll change the colors of the background and the foreground. When you change these, you're not choosing which colors you use, but rather picking from a preset list that the game already has. And you can use the up and down arrow keys to cycle through these. If you're happy with a change, you can hit apply. If not, hit discard and that'll revert the change. Next, we're going to go over the screen exit editor. That's the pipe up here. When you're dealing with screen exits, you're going to want to see the screen boundaries. So go to view, screen boundaries. All right, so let's say we want to put a screen exit somewhere in here. You can do that a couple different ways, but we're just going to use a pipe. Drag the pipe in. Now we're going to find the screen number. That's always in the top left here. So this one's 70, the one above it's 60. Then to the right we have 61, 62, etc. We'll go back to the screen exit editor, change the target page to match the room that we're in. Click enable, and then we'll choose the destination. The destination level is the level index number. So in this case, it's 00. If you hit control L to open up the level list, you have them on the left side here too. So for this one, we'll do 00. Next, we're gonna set the X and Y coordinates. These are listed down here in the bottom left corner and they correspond to your cursor's position on the screen. So let's just pick something like five and 65. You'll wanna turn on the tile grid and that'll make things easier when you place blocks or to figure out the precise position of something. And then we'll select how the exit behaves. So it could be skis, right, left, a jump. We'll hit apply. And now the room is outlined in red. This is how we know the room has an active screen exit. So now we're gonna test it. We'll hit Control S to save and then F5 to run it. That's gonna open up the emulator. We'll jump into 1-1. One, one. And we'll see if it works. So there's the pipe. And there we go. To make things easier for you, you'll want to make a save state here at the menu or anytime just before you enter the level. That way you can just load the save state and then play test whatever you changed. All right, so let's go back and fix that pipe exit. So first thing that we're going to do, we're going to duplicate it and then we're going to scale it upward. That's going to flip it upside down. One thing to know is that Yoshi takes up a 2x2 two two space, and so we'll have to account for that when we set up our screen exit coordinates. So an easy way to do that is to take a coin, scale it up to a block of 4, and then put it over the end of the pipe, and then set your coordinates to match the top left corner here. I'll take out the coins, we'll save, and then we'll test it, and we'll see if it works. That's exactly what you want. When you're testing stuff, don't forget to close out previous versions of the emulator. Otherwise, you'll have multiple running at the same time. The last menu icon that we're going to go over is the minimap. This lets you navigate across the level much quicker. You just click on it and then you can drag your cursor around. Unfortunately, the scroll wheel doesn't actually do what it should, so you'll either have to use the map or use the scroll bars on the sides. If you want to start off with a completely blank level, just go up to level, clear level data, and you can choose exactly what to clear. However, if you do it, it can't be undone, so make sure to be careful with that. One general tip I have is to take a look at the already existing levels and see how those are put together, see what pieces make them up, and also look at them for inspiration and ideas. All right, so when you want to share your level, you'll go back to your toolkit, Go to miscellaneous, level sharing, and open up flips. You'll go to settings, create ROM, and then close the window. You'll go to create patch. You'll select the original unmodified ROM, and you'll make a copy of it. We're going to use the copy here. And then we'll select the one that we made the changes to. And then name it. And now you've created your patch. And then you'll navigate back to the file that you just made and then you can share it. It has to be done this way because sharing the actual ROM is illegal, but you're just sharing the patch, the changes, so that's perfectly fine. When you want to play someone else's level, you'll go back to flips, you'll hit apply patch, you'll choose the patch that they sent you, and then you'll choose a copy of your Yoshi's Island ROM. Just name it and then you can play it like any other ROM. But with that, that's going to be the end of this tutorial. I hope it helps, and I hope you have fun making levels.